Last year, I was going out for drinks with my friends, but since I had to go to university the next day, I only stayed out until around midnight. My boyfriend had promised to pick me up and to go home with me, because I didn't like to take the subway alone at night, but since I was pretty drunk by then, I took a little too long walking out of the pub. Unfortunately, we had to wait for the night bus, with multiple stops since the subway closes on weekdays at night. For context, my boyfriend and I don't live together, but we're very close to each other, around 15 to 20 minutes away in walking distance. Both areas are pretty bad. He lives near a train station with many crackheads and homeless and sketchy people around. And I live in a cheap, bad district with a high crime rate. My building has two entrances on two different streets, because it's a corner building site leading to a patio and then to the apartment building and its doors. To get into my apartment, I have to open like three doors. I usually use the entrance door that is nearer to the subway and on the side of my apartment. We had to take two buses to go home. One drove us to the train station, and the next one from the train station to my apartment. After getting out of the first bus, we realized that we would have to wait for around 20 minutes or something for the second bus to show up. And since I really had to sleep at home, again I had class the next day, I didn't want to stay at his place. My boyfriend didn't want to wait so he persuaded me to walk instead of taking the bus, which sober me would have never done. But since I was still drunk I didn't care how we got home so I agreed. So we started to walk home and passed a few sketchy people. Mostly people dealing drugs, but nothing really bad. And then I saw a guy walking in our direction and somehow got a bad feeling. So I told my boyfriend that I wanted to change to the other side of the street, because I didn't want to walk past him. Suddenly the guy yelled out, Hey! As if he wanted to ask us something, but we ignored it and continued to walk. He got louder and louder until he started to yell. I could see from the corner of my eye that he was coming over, so I whispered run to my boyfriend, took his hand and ran the fastest that I could while he was chasing after us. We ran and ran and ran and then made a turn to the right, the street where I live, and hid. It seemed like he was gone so I took my keys out and we started running towards my building, taking the other entrance of my building that I normally didn't use. As I was trying to open the door, my boyfriend started panicking, throwing me inside the patio and closing the door aggressively, and then pushing me to the building. He explained that the guy came running from the other side of the street, meaning that he took a shortcut, probably thinking that we were going to run to the subway or the bus stops. If we had taken the other entrance, he would have been clearly the faster one. Being in shock, we unfortunately didn't call the police, which I regret. I stopped going out for drinks or clubbing for about a half a year after this, and I slept at my boyfriend's place for two weeks, because I was scared that he would come back. I think the worst thing about this is that he really wanted to get us for whatever reason. I still don't know why he chased us for so long. Two weeks later, a girl a few streets away was attacked in front of her building by a guy who had chased her home. I wonder if it was the same guy or just a coincidence. One time, I was walking home from the train station after I had spent the weekend at my aunt's house. It was about 11pm at night and very dark outside. When I was almost home, I noticed a guy on crutches in front of me, who walked the same direction and then stopped every couple of meters to turn around and then look at me before continuing to walk on. Since he was walking with a limp, I quickly passed him by. When I did, he stopped walking and he grinned at me in a very creepy way. I kept moving. Since I lived in an apartment over a burger restaurant, for a moment, I considered to ask one of the employees to walk me to the front door, and because to get to the entrance of the apartment part of the house, you had to walk around the house into a dark courtyard. Finally, I however didn't ask because I thought what could possibly happen. 
The guy's on crutches and I didn't want to come across as a childish. So I was walking through the courtyard of her house and wanted to pull out my keys while walking, but suddenly I couldn't find them in my handbag. I realized that I had thrown them somewhere inside my travel bag, because I didn't want to lose them for my handbag while staying in my aunt's and being out with her all the time. So, still standing in the middle of the court, I had to search the whole travel bag for the dang key. I was so distracted by the whole searching incident that I totally forgot about the creepy guy that I had encountered before. When I finally pulled the key out of the bag, I looked up and the creepy guy from before was standing right in front of me grinning. I always thought in a situation like that that I would start screaming, but instead I couldn't get myself to make any sound at all. With the keys in my hand, I started running to the front door, opened it, and jumped inside the house. The guy, still walking with the lamp, followed me as fast as he could. Luckily, due to his injury, he wasn't as fast as me. Unfortunately for me, our front door was one of those doors that slowly fell into the lock automatically. But when you try to push them in order to shut them quicker, it adds pressure back and stops you from slamming it. So there I was, trying to push the door into the lock, while the creepy guy was on his way to follow me into the house. Believe it or not, the door fell into the lock right in the second that he reached the doorstep. Through the glass door, we just kind of looked at each other, both breathing heavily from the race. He looked quite disappointed. I quickly ran upstairs to my apartment and I locked myself in it. Later that night, I looked outside my window and saw that same man walking up and down the road in front of the house. He stayed there for about three to four hours after the incident. I can't tell you what it was that made me not call the police. I guess I was like, after all, nothing had happened. What could they even do about it? After that, I didn't feel safe in my home anymore, because I knew that he knew where I lived. I only left my apartment when being picked up or dropped off and made sure to be home before it was turning dark every day for two weeks. Finally, I did decide to call the police and tell them about it, to ask whether they could keep a special eye on the neighborhood for a little bit. I went to the police station and it happened exactly what I had feared. They took notes and said, mm -hmm, We can't really do anything about it now, you should have called before, but we'll make a note of it. A couple of days passed and suddenly I get a call back from another officer who asked me a lot about what had happened. He then tells me that they've been looking for the guy on crutches for months already because he had gotten in trouble in town before. He had followed girls into their apartment and even slept in front of their doors. He had been in police custody before, got out and violated probation. He had some kind of mental illness too. The police officer told me to immediately call in case the guy showed up again. He luckily never did though. It was only then that I understood the seriousness of the situation and realized that I most likely escaped an attempted attack in some sort of way by just an inch. In a way, I really didn't believe myself that the whole thing had actually happened before the police guy had called me back. This was five years ago, but I still think about it from time to time, and it still gives me the creeps. Some quick backstory. I've had a stalker for about four years, and he was never aggressive or sent me proper threats. So as stubborn as I am, I did my best to ignore him and not give him the satisfaction of showing him any fear. To be honest, after a while I also wasn't scared anymore, since he never even came close to me. I know being stalked can affect people severely even in a case like mine, and that's totally valid. But I guess I just got lucky and was never really psychologically affected by it. His stalking behavior mostly consisted of sending me letters and gifts, such as photos of my own apartment building from the outside things he dug out of my trash can and so on. I called the police many times, but they weren't able to or really tried to be honest, to catch or identify him. 
About three weeks ago, I discovered the German version of Ask Me Anything and thought that people might want to know about what it's like to have a stalker. Since I barely use any social media aside from Reddit and have no personally identifying information here, I didn't think that he would ever see it. One person even asked, Does he know that you're putting him on blast on Reddit? And I answered, Maybe, maybe it would make him angry. Maybe he'd be turned on. I don't know, don't care. Well, I know the real answer now. He did see it and he did not like it. Like I said, he was never aggressive and never came close to me. The closest that I know of was when he sent me a picture of myself, unlocking my apartment door, taken from the corner of the steps above. Sorry if that makes no sense, I don't know how else to explain it. But I consider myself a pretty vigilant person, and I'm thinking that he might have hit a camera there instead of being there to have the photo himself. I think I would have noticed him if he did. I don't know how he got the wind of the AMA, but he did. The next week was quiet. No letters and I didn't see him anywhere. And then he left me letters with printed out questions and my answers from the AMA. He also left me a long hateful letter towards my boyfriend about an issue that I had posted in the German version of Am I the Idiot? His letters were never hateful like that before, though he never seemed happy with my boyfriend. He wrote about how I should share the spotlight with him, since I got so much attention thanks to him. A few days later I got a gift, but this time he didn't leave it in my mailbox or at my car like he usually did. No, this time he left it inside the apartment building right in front of my door. I didn't take it inside my apartment, but I had opened it outside. It was a pretty big box, which was also unusual, and it was taped shut. As I'm typing it out, I realized that it wasn't a good idea at all, and that it could have ended badly for me. But lucky that he didn't send me a bomb or anything. He did, however, send me several zip ties, a roll of duct tape, the kind that you use to tape off walls when painting. Nothing that you could do to restrain someone. A TV remote with the buttons picked off. A pack of band-aids with a few used ones. Not actually, just made to look that way according to the police. And a framed picture of me. I could tell that the picture was taken a few days ago and my boyfriend was next to me but cut out of the photo. The frame was shattered and the package was full of glass shards. Clearly more than just what could have fallen out of the frame and they were also intentionally put inside the crumpled newspaper that was stuffed in there to keep it all in place. I called the police right away and I gave it to them. They were more concerned this time, finally, thank you, and told me that they would send patrol cars more frequently. He didn't show up or leave me any letters or gifts for about another week and a half, but eight days ago it started again. I found letters in my mailbox where he wrote about how he had wasted his time on me, how I hadn't even been appreciating his effort, and how he was wrong about me being special. Five days ago I left my apartment in the morning and heard a crunching sound as I stepped on my doormat. He had put broken glass under it in the night. I went off to work because I was in a hurry and was just about to go make my boyfriend call the police but that I found my car had also been vandalized. The sides were scratched up, the lights smashed and the windshield had a phrase painted on it. It's time soon, miss, my last name. I went back inside and called the cops myself. They found the same phrase on a note under the doormat. This time they really, really, really took me seriously, which might have been because I was just pissed off at this point, which I made very clear. If for some reason you're like me and just too stubborn to be afraid of a stalker like mine, then all of this, the letters, gifts, photos, even the dang glass under my doormat, they're just really annoying and inconvenient. But my car was useless to me now and the threat scared even me. I did however have a dash cam on my car and it caught everything. The police said to take the footage as evidence 
even though the dash cam footage wasn't of high quality. And I had given them photos of him that were just as good before, but they said that it wasn't enough. And they told me that they'll look into it further and promise to send more patrol cars again. And then it was quiet for two more days. Until two days ago, someone rang the doorbell at just after 4am. My boyfriend and I got up but we were both hesitant. But I saw blue lights outside and just as I got up I heard them shouting, This is the police, please open the door. They told us that they were called by one of our downstairs neighbors, who came home from his night shift about an hour earlier, and heard someone else enter the building after them, before the door fell shut. My neighbors know of my situation and I've asked them to make sure they don't let strangers into the building. This neighbor then went into his own apartment and looked through the peephole. We have motion activated lights in the stairway so he waited to see if they turned back on. They did and then he saw a middle-aged man walk upstairs. Above this neighbor are only me and my boyfriend, and a single mom with three kids who probably won't be getting any visitors at 3 a.m., so he called the police. They came and found my stalker one half floor above me on the stairs. He should have been able to see the cop car since. There's a little window up there and they have had their lights on, but he either missed them or he wanted to get caught. They found a pocket knife on him and he confessed to being my stalker right away. He was finally caught. They got him but it took four years, a provocative reddit post and one very vigilant and caring neighbor. But he's finally done. For now at least. He's facing several charges and I've collected every single piece of evidence over the past four years. I don't know what kind of outcome I can expect but for now, I finally got some peace. This story goes back to the year 2015. It was around 8pm and it was summer so at that time it was just starting to get dark. I live in a town where crime almost never happens. It's a very safe rural area with very few people. Here all the shops close early so that night I went shopping around 740 and everything was quiet. I didn't have enough money to pay so I bought and when I got home. I had to go out again and take the rest of the money that I needed to pay to the store. I was listening to music and I had bought new headphones and was trying them out. I was walking two blocks from my house when a motorcycle with two men came out of nowhere. The man behind got out and took out a gun, pointed it at my head and started yelling at me to give him my things. I was paralyzed but I managed to yell no. He yelled at me again to give him my cell phone. He yelled, Give me everything. And I just squeezed my cell phone and headphones and yelled, No, these are my things. Over and over again. The whole time, the gun was pointed at my face, just a meter away. When the guy with the gun saw that I wouldn't give him anything, he fired. I saw very clearly how he pulled the trigger and the gun. He got on the motorcycle with the other man and they left at full speed. I didn't get shot at and I don't know if it was real or fake, if it had bullets in it or not. I don't know anything. Plus it was just after dark but it's the most terrifying experience that I've ever had. As soon as they left I ran out and I got to the store where I was going to first. I arrived crying and shaking. It was hard for me to even speak. I asked for help and they called my mom who came to pick me up in a taxi because I didn't want to walk home even though it was only about four streets away. That was the first and last time that I ever experienced a robbery attempt. It was the most stressful situation that I've ever been through. I don't know how to describe the absolute panic that I felt when I saw the barrel of a gun in front of my eyes and all for a cheap cell phone and some headphones. God, they didn't give a crap about a girl's life. They just put a gun to my face. I wish that no one else ever has to go through this, much less any children. 
I was lucky, but many are not. Especially in the city to which my town belongs, where this is common currency.